a 2003 to 2007 Honda Accord buyer's guide video. This is the type of content most of the mainstream reviewers typically avoid, but I know this is the information most people need to know and need to hear. So if you appreciate that and you find value and edification with this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to be primarily focused on the sedan version of this Honda Accord because that's the practical choice. And I'm assuming most people looking into these model years of the Accord, they're looking for a car that's under $5,000. So we're gonna go over reliability, maintenance, sourcing parts, working on the vehicle, and the overall buying market, financing, all that good stuff with a vehicle of this age and this price category. So let's get started. If you've seen my previous buyer's guide videos, you know that there's one main resource that I really love to use, and that is nhtsa.gov. But if you're new to watching this, then this is gonna be the best resource in finding out all of the issues that a car is going to have. So you come to this website, I just typed in 03 Honda Accord. That is the first model year of this generation. So you should always avoid the first model year of any car, unless you're leasing it new, but that's clearly not applying here. So you come to the site, enter in the car you're interested in, scroll down, and we have four main sections to talk about. You have your complaints, which we have 2,000 complaints on the Honda Accord. That is the most amount of complaints I have ever seen for any car. Clearly, this is a mass-produced car. A lot of people have it, but still, that is a lot. And then you have the recalls. We have 24 recalls five investigations, and 388 manufacturer communications. This is also going to be known as TSBs or technical service bulletins. These are the issues that the manufacturer themselves find with their own product. And that's why this website and information is so valuable. So this is the official government website, but there's also another site called carcomplaints.com. And I like using this, especially for more mainstream cars, because they pretty much take the NHTSA information and they consolidate it in a easy, more digestible format. They show you a useful graph of issues based on model years. And we can see that 03 and 08, those are the first model years of those two generations. They have the most amount of issues. So if you're shopping for this generation, make sure to buy an 05 to 07 model year. Anyway, you click on 03, you scroll down. This is mainly what I wanted to cover in today's video. <laughs> and I chose a Honda Accord for this main reason because you scroll to this bottom, you see the worst Honda Accord problems. It's all related to transmission problems. And I bring this up because Nissan of this era got so much flack and so much hate for their CVT transmission issues, but Honda of the same model years, they never got the same scrutiny. I was always fascinated with that double standard amongst consumers. Like no matter what Nissan did, right or wrong, everyone just hated Nissan, but when Honda, even if they screwed up royally, like these early 2000s vehicles with the insane transmission problems, both for the automatics and for the manuals, mind you, Nobody cares. Even till this day, Honda is seen as like a really reliable brand that's up there with Toyota. And honestly, in my opinion, that couldn't be further from the truth. These cars have a lot of problems. I even had a 2010 Acura TSX. Had a lot of problems with that car as well. But I still love Honda. They are easily the top tier, best handling, like normal car out there. Absolutely annihilates any Toyota in terms of drivability, especially in the early 2000s. Honda was just crushing it. I've actually driven this generation of Honda Accord and it's amazing. It also ages really well as long as you take care of it. The interior is pretty solid. So I like Honda products. They're great to lease new, but when you buy them used like this, you have to be a little careful. And once again, this website, carcomplaints.com, it's summarizing or consolidating that NHTSA information. And I also like how they show detailed crash test ratings. Crash test safety absolutely sucks for pretty much all cars of the early 2000s, aside from a few luxury cars. But yeah, this Honda Accord, it gets annihilated in a side crash test. But 
we can't have it all you can't have a cheap car safety performance all of it it's just not possible so something's got to give if you drive an early 2000s car just shoot up a prayer you know just say jesus take the wheel before you set off and that's it that's the best that you can do the recalls once again that gets summarized here and tsbs that's mainly what i wanted to cover it's much easier to go through it on the carcomplaints.com we see here uh, steering vibration problems a leaking power steering pump uh, with the o-rings can cause an oil leak yeah just a lot of power steering issues as we can see on this website uh, vehicle tends to drift right rear stabilizer link is broken again folks these are all issues that the manufacturer themselves honda themselves found these problems out about their own car and they're listing it as a public tsb for us the consumer to go over and this is all things that you have to potentially deal with when you buy a car like this used we have some brake pedal popping or clicking noises brake pedal can occasionally be hard to press down car can make a grunt noise after sitting for several hours i got some abs issues the rear cylinder head cover gasket leaks oil anyway the list goes on and on the point is it's too much to count it's too much to go over i just mainly wanted to share with you these resources because when you have these two websites you almost don't even need the forums but the forums are another great resource to have and to access as well but when you just come to the complaint section of either car complaints or nhtsa those are actual humans writing in to nhtsa the government uh, talking about the issues that they've had with their own car so that's why i like the complaint section along with the tsbs so next let's talk about maintenance then we can get into the buying market and cover some of the basic financials of dealing with a car like this in this type of budget between you know five to ten thousand dollars Surprisingly, when I googled the 2003 Honda Accord maintenance schedule, I came across this very interesting article by thedrive.com saying, here's what it takes to keep a 2003 Honda Accord running for nearly a million miles. It's a very interesting read, so I'll have that linked in the description box below so you can check that out in your own time. Definitely some valuable information and perhaps some people can even rest assured knowing that their Honda Accord has the potential of going up to a million miles. But the resource I want to share with you is kellybluebook.com. They do a pretty good job of illustrating what needs to be done for each maintenance interval and it also shows you an estimate of what you can pay for each maintenance interval. So I like the way they break things down. And again, you can check out the Honda forums as well to see what some owners are paying for each maintenance cycle and how you can potentially get some tips and tricks on how to do these maintenance items yourself. So that can save you the ultimate amount of money, even though it might take up a lot of your time. But the good news is this is an economy car maintenance, Th these sorts of things it's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg like some exotic cars. So that's one of the saving graces about a old economy car like the Honda Accord. But keep in mind, you are going to have to replace things like tires. You are going to have insurance on a vehicle like this. A good set of tires mounted, balanced on a Honda Accord. It can cost between 450 to $600, somewhere around there. I would personally just buy like a Kumo soulless tire i really like that tire and it's around 388 dollars plus mounting taxes additional fees etc so that's a pretty affordable tire around the 400 dollars range and i like the performance of that tire as well and this is for a set of brand new tires mind you from discount tire it's not like used tires or anything like that i never suggest playing with used tires always get new tires that are actually of decent quality and i've heard some good things about nexon tires as well so without going into continental or michelin these two the kumo and the nexons they seem to be a, a decent alternative because after all tires that rubber that is what's actually coming into contact with the road so a good set of tires that can fix a lot of issues and also doing an alignment on a car can fix a lot of the weird vibrations or tugging effects that some cars seem to have. An alignment can take care of it and doing a full brake job, you know, if you have a, a vibration coming to a stop, that's typically the brakes. Replacing the 
rotors, the pads, that should take care of it. And a good website you can use is rockauto.com to get new parts for your, for your vehicle. And they sell good aftermarket brands at pretty affordable prices. So rockauto.com, definitely a good resource to use, but we'll talk more about what you're going to need to own a cheap car properly a little bit later. But for right now, let's go ahead and let's talk about the 03 to 07 Honda Accord used car market and pricing. Okay, I did a nationwide search on car gurus and I filtered out all the accident cars, all the clapped out salvage vehicles, theft cars, etc. The reason why I do that is because for one, it ruins the resale value of that car. Okay, when you have an accident on a car, it's always going to be worth less than a car that has no accidents on it. The second main reason is you have no idea how a body shop put that car back together. It's never going to be back to OEM spec. So that's why I try to avoid accident cars as much as I can. And after doing so, we have about 366 cars available throughout the entire United States. Cheapest one is $2,300 with 227,000 miles. It's, a, it's an 05 EXL. But when you're dealing with cars like this, you also have to be careful with the types of dealerships that you are dealing with. Make sure they have good Google reviews, etc. And the reason why a lot of these used cars get such a bad rep and why they are so seemingly shady and they have uh, weird business practices is because typically the people who are buying the two, three, four, five thousand dollar cars, they're also typically a little shady, to be fair. Dealerships now have to get their guard up as well. And that essentially caused that whole used car economy to not really benefit either party, the dealership or the consumer, sadly. That's the problem with dishonesty, you know, consumers coming in with fake pay stubs, things like that. And when the when the consumer tries to screw over the dealership, you know who gets into trouble? The bank now has problems with the dealership. They actually go after the dealership, they charge them a bunch of fees, etc. They take back all their money and their profits, and now the dealership has to be on the hook to go after the consumer that screwed them and to get the car back. So it's just one big fiasco. And um, yeah, just try to buy from reputable places, good used car lots. Uh, really the best thing you can do is buy from a family member, you know, where you actually know the history of some of these cars, because these are good cars as long as they're well maintained. The problem is buying the clapped out cars. And how does a car end up being clapped out? Well, we saw the myriad of issues on NHTSA.gov's website when certain people when they buy an unfortunate car that has a lot of issues and they can't really afford to you know, fix it, they just let the issues start to compile and to compound and then they just go dump it somewhere, you know, some dealership or wherever. And the dealership never fixes the issue, so everyone keeps kicking the can down the road. Yeah, at the end of the day, everyone hopes that some sucker comes along and buys the car in the nasty condition that it's in. Definitely do a thorough test drive and definitely bring a mechanic with you as well to do a pre-purchase inspection before you buy the car so you know exactly what's wrong with it. And the older the car is, now you have to be worried about rust as well. And rust can really destroy vehicles. And cars like this that are over 20 years old or close to it, yeah, that's something you really have to look out for. And that's why it's imperative that you bring a mechanic along with you. But for between seven and $10,000, yeah, you can definitely get clean versions of this car. And as I mentioned before, I do love driving this car, but with transmission issues, steering, suspension, you know, all these other things that can go wrong with the car, it's just you pretty much have to be a mechanic all on your own to be able to maintain some of these cars affordably, which I'll talk about in the next segment. And after that financing, because the other thing is not everybody has five grand to spend on a used car like this. After all, over 70% of America does not have a thousand dollars in a savings account. So how are they going to be able to afford this car? Well, I'll try to talk about that towards the end. But for right now, let's talk about what you're going to need in order to afford one of these cars. Okay. 
Okay, so your budget is around five grand, no problem. That's definitely the boat that most people are in, and that's okay. But here are three main things that you're going to need. Okay, so you go out and you buy like an 05 Honda Accord. You need a great junkyard nearby. One of the good things about buying these mass-produced Japanese cars is you go to a junkyard, you should be able to get parts for these vehicles. I mentioned Rock Auto a little bit before, but that's if you need like new parts. But if you're really on a budget, a good junkyard is imperative when you own cars like this because there's no real warranty you can get for a car like this. Even if you could, you know, pay two, three thousand dollars for a warranty, you might as well just use that money to just buy another Honda Accord. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So even if there was a warranty opportunity out there, it's really not necessary because one of the other saving graces for this car is it's a Honda. It is literally the easiest car in the world to work on. Get yourself a 10 millimeter socket and you should be able to like pull apart this entire car yourself. So that is one of the best parts about owning a Honda product. It is very simple to work on, but that is the other thing. You are going to need to invest in some basic tools and you will have to like kind of sort of be a mechanic. You really need to learn how to work on cars yourself, look up some YouTube tutorials. So owning a car like this, you need to study up and this is going to take a lot of your time. And if you think I'm overreacting, well, okay, so be it. I'm sure those people exist where they buy a Honda Accord and they've had zero issues with it. They've never done any maintenance to it and it runs perfectly. That's great. But I don't live in a fairy tale world. I'm looking at all of the facts and the figures and I'm looking at the mileage and the condition that these cars are in in the used car market for these prices. And it looks like these cars will run into some issues and you're definitely going to have to maintain it, buy tires, etc. So this is going to cost you some money. The other thing, aside from you becoming a good mechanic is you need to have a legitimate mechanic by your side as well, all right? Because you can't learn everything at once. So you need a good mechanic in the meantime that you can trust because you're also going to need them to do the pre-purchase inspection when you buy a car like this. So that's the three main things you need. You need skills yourself. You also need a good junkyard and you need a good mechanic. Next, I'm gonna talk about the financials of a car like this. All right, so we established that this car is possible to get for less than $5,000, great. So now you need that cash. Plus you gotta pay title, registration, fees, and taxes. So depending on the state that you're in, yeah, that can certainly add up. You got your maintenance, you got your potential repairs, you got the tools that you're gonna have to invest in, paying a mechanic, paying for parts. That's all going to contribute to this. And not to mention most people don't have the funds necessary to pay for a car like this in cash. And can you take out a loan for a car like this? Well, it seems to be very difficult because most banks are not lending out on cars that are this old. And that's why a lot of used car dealerships don't really like to carry vehicles in this five to $10,000 range because due to their age, banks won't lend on them and most people don't carry that much cash to be able to afford to buy those cars outright. So it kind of leaves dealerships and consumers in a weird predicament there. But what are you going to do? This is just what you have to pay to get a decent car. There are some personal loans that you can take out, but obviously in today's interest rates, even people with great credit scores, you know, 800 credit score people are paying 8% interest on new cars. So imagine what you're going to be paying on a personal loan with not so great credit, right? You can imagine that is going to be very expensive. So that $5,000 car is gonna end up being a $10,000 car after the bank is done with you. I highly doubt a car dealership is gonna allow you to pay for this car with a credit card because consumers can just call the credit card company and file a chargeback or something and that can screw over the banks and it's just something that they don't wanna deal with. Along with the fact the vendors have to pay a fee to accept a credit card like they have to pay a three percent fee on the transaction so they obviously don't want to take that hit on a five thousand dollar purchase so genuinely what i would suggest if you're really hurting for cash if you really don't have the means to buy something like this outright i'm not being facetious here i would get a bus pass for fifty dollars a month if you can make that work if you can make public transportation like riding the bus work out for you that is the best thing you can do you will be ahead of 
almost everyone in the United States if you can make this happen because the average person is paying five to $700 a month on their car note. You can literally save all of that money along with repairs, maintenance, fuel costs. I didn't even mention fuel costs. Fortunately, these are good cars on fuel and they take regular, but still you get to avoid all of that if you ride the bus. So if you can make that happen, great. If not, I understand that as well. Me personally, because the banks suck so hard right now, I just started up one of those infinite banking whole life insurance policies. The only reason why I'm telling you this is not so you can go out and do that yourself, but I just want to open your mind onto what's possible because I am not an insurance sales agent. I don't even want you to follow in my footsteps, okay? But what you can do is research the concept yourself on Google, on YouTube, and you can make up your own mind about it. But essentially, I just dump money into this policy. And it's not just the regular one that you go out to your local insurance company and, and buy. That's not it, okay? The one that Dave Ramsey screams at everyone for getting. That's not the one. This is a very specially engineered whole life insurance policy that's growing tax-free at a guaranteed rate of 3.25% per year, compounded plus dividends. And I am able to borrow up to 85% of the cash value that I put into this policy. So if I put 10 grand into this policy, I can take a loan out for like $8,500 and I can use that money to pay for said Honda Accord. The point of doing that is so the money is growing tax-free, compounding, and that can be worth whatever, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars when I'm 65. But today I get to take out a loan, not go to a bank and play their high interest rate games. No, the interest rate on those kind of whole life insurance policies are between five to 8%. But the big difference between those life insurance policy loans and a traditional car loan is the interest isn't front loaded like it is on a traditional car loan where they push all the interest up front and you're making payments, but the majority of it is going to interest and you end up with very little equity after three to four years. Yeah, this is not how that works. First of all, you don't even have to pay the policy loan back if you don't want to, but it's very wise of you to do so. So I would pay back the loan and they're just gonna charge you like a very simple interest. So if you take out a loan for 10 grand and the interest rate is 5%, they're only gonna send you a bill for $500 at the end of the year. So technically you can just get away with paying that. So that's the power of borrowing from a life insurance policy. It's not gonna affect your credit. If you miss a payment, there's not gonna be a repo man towing your car away. I have not yet purchased a car with this life insurance policy. I'm just investing in businesses. That's really what you should do with a life insurance policy like that, investing in businesses and real estate. But you can also buy a car as well you can you can do whatever you want with it but again i'm not here to tell you what to do with your money that's just what i did personally so i can get out of the stock market and get out of the up and down cycle of that nonsense i would rather just take the guaranteed percentage that the life insurance company guarantees me along with the dividends that they pay me and borrowing from it is just icing on the cake i just want to let you know this is what wealthy people do to purchase very expensive cars luxury items, paying for their vacation trips, investing in real estate and other things. This is how they do it. You can do your own research on it. Again, I'm not encouraging you to do anything with your money. This is just information that literally no other car reviewer will ever bother to share with you, partly because they don't really know about any of the things I just shared with you in this video. And even if they did, they still wouldn't share it because they just can't be bothered. But hopefully you appreciated me for sharing this advice. Next up, let's conclude. Okay, concluding thoughts on the 03 to 07 Honda Accord. It's a good car, I do like it, but just be careful. These early model year cars have terrible safety ratings and clearly will cost you money to keep up with maintenance and insurance, tires, and potential repairs. You know, you're gonna have to have a good network of junkyards and mechanics, and you yourself need to kind of become one to save the optimal amount of money because you don't wanna to spend too much on a car like this. Me personally, I hate the used car market. Financing on cars like this is terrible, as I already talked about in great detail. 
I personally like to just lease and dump cars. That's what I enjoy doing. Or at the bare minimum, just purchase a brand new Nissan Versa base model with a manual transmission for around $17,000. I would like for you to at least get to that place because it's a new car, much safer, and it comes with a manual transmission. If you don't know how to drive one, then definitely learn how to do so because that way thieves can't even steal the car because nobody else knows how to drive a manual transmission. But hopefully these resources are valuable to you. I'll share with you one last thing. I like Edmunds.com to check out the various model year changes. They do a good job of letting us know what's new for each model year. So you can kind of look through that. I'll have everything linked down below along with a massive article from Honda themselves with more information than what you care to know about the 03 to 07 Honda Accord. Honda goes crazy with the amount of information that they share about their own products. I really appreciate that. So I'll have that article linked below if you want to learn more about this generation of the Accord. But if you found value with this content, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Take care and goodbye.